It's the Speedway Show, an idea exchange empowering us to live well, live fully, and love deeply. And now, here's our host, Speedway. Hi there, and uh, you are watching the Speedway Show today. Our topic is excellence in education. It is part of our career profile series where we profile somebody's career or a particular uh, area of uh, uh, somebody's profession. And today to talk to me is uh, Bill Woodson, who happens to be assistant dean at the University of St. Thomas Opus College of Business. And now this is the part where we get to talk about you and your career. So for all of you in college, high school, wondering, how can I be down? How do I get a career like this? Tell us about your path and how did you get to this prestigious institution? Well, no one could have ever convinced me that uh, I would be finding a career in academia. My mother was a high school chemistry teacher and I saw how hard she worked, and I saw how modest the compensation was, and I said, I'm, I've got to find something that's going to be easier and better paying than that. You know what? Both <laughs> my parents were teachers, and I thought the same thing. I thought, she's in the, in the summertime, she's working. In the wintertime, she's working. Every holiday, she's working. My dad's working, too. And I'm looking at how we're struggling, and I'm thinking, gee, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I, I can do better than that. I, <laughs> yes. And I actually uh, have come to academia fairly recently. It's been really with my joining St. Thomas's uh, leadership team in 2007 that I've made that step. But the largest part of my career has actually been in the corporate world. I worked for three different Fortune 500 companies over a 19-year period of time, and I prepared myself for that career with an MBA degree. Uh, that I earned at Michigan back in the 80s, and actually prior to that, I also uh, uh, had a uh, right after college, I pursued a uh, degree in masters, uh, a master's degree in city and regional planning, because I was going to be a public servant and I was going to change the world, make it a better place uh, through uh, serving in the public sector. And where did you get that degree? I went to uh, Harvard's Kennedy School of Government, and. Uh, that was back in the 79, 80, 81 time period. I actually had a summer internship in the uh, governor's office in Trenton, New Jersey, and uh, worked in uh, legal services as, a, as an internship during my time at uh, the Harvard Kennedy School as well. So here's the thing that I always wonder, because you know everybody touts the value of the Ivy League education and how you know if you go to Harvard, you are guaranteed to have a salary that's, you know, off in the cloud somewhere. <laughs> and I have always wondered, so now that you went through that, was that Harvard name instrumental in the rest of your career? Is that why, if, if, if I came from the University of Dayton, uh, could I end up with a career at the University of St. Thomas? Oh, my goodness, absolutely yes. And I actually talk about uh, my time at Harvard, which, not to bash uh, one of the world's great educational institutions, but uh, I have uh, also a very fine undergraduate uh, degree and experience, and uh, I'm a very passionate uh, supporter of Brown University, which is where I got my undergraduate degree. And I'm also a pretty active uh, alum, a uh, very active alum, I'd say, at, at, of, of Michigan in the business school. But the Harvard degree is definitely a door opener it wasn't really the experience that uh, really uh, changed or supported my, my, my success. And frankly, I sp earned, spent two years earning the degree and then spent two and a half years in the field that that degree prepared me for before recognizing that that wasn't the career for me, that wasn't the path for me, and I went back to school to get my MBA. So two years of educational expense, two and a half years of work experience building off of that educational uh, expense, not necessarily the ROI that I was hoping for. And that become actually part of my story. Again, it's definitely a degree that opens doors. Everyone knows the Harvard name. But uh, my Michigan degree in business has really been what supported my, uh, the balance of my career, 19 years, as I said, in corporate. And then uh, consulting for uh, three years, my corporate experience was actually also fairly varied. 
uh, 11 years was with uh, computer companies. I worked at uh, Hewlett Packard and Compaq Computer for uh, a total of 11 years, uh, marketing functions uh, primarily, and then moved from that to healthcare, uh, medical device marketing with Johnson & Johnson, and was there for almost eight years. The degree in business combined with a solid uh, liberal arts undergraduate degree gave me a confidence that I could make that industry transition. And uh, one of the beauties of an MBA degree, and I'm not saying this just because I'm the assistant dean of an MBA program, <laughs> doesn't but hurt. But truly, truly. But truly, <laughs> truly. The MBA degree is a beautiful degree because of its flexibility. It really does position you for legitimate uh, engagement of such a broad range of careers and industries. I tell young people all the time, you have to be prepared not only for the options that you're aware of, but for the future which hasn't been written yet. I love to point out that I spent 11 years of my career in the personal computer business, in that industry. Well, that industry was created, or started, if you will, with uh, uh, Wozniak and Jobs and uh, Palo Alto Garage in 1978 in the first uh, Apple PC. Well, I graduated from college in 1979. I had no way of knowing that that would develop into an industry that I would spend the largest single chunk of my career in. But I had a good liberal arts foundation, and that combined with an MBA degree from a pr strong program allowed me to participate in that industry very effectively, even though I didn't know that that's what I was preparing for when I was in college, or even in graduate school for that matter. And that's, that's the beauty of the right, the, having the, a degree pathway and a platform that just opens your options up to so many different things. And now, I'm in academia, and again, my MBA degree has prepared me for the administrative responsibilities mm -hmm. of admissions, of career services, of student life. All of those relate back to disciplines that were really uh, the foundation was laid in my MBA program. So you were in corporate America, city planning, mm -hmm. and then you were also a consultant. That's right. Uh, were you self-employed? You know, I had uh, three years where my primary uh, employment was a, a consulting practice that I started called uh, Forward Motion uh, Management Consulting. And uh, that ended up being the bridge. I didn't know that that was the case at the time, but that ended up being the bridge that led to my engagement in, in this academic post. I, as a management consultant, after 19 years in the corporate world, I, I had a desire to, to do this thing that I had always expected would be a part of my uh, career experience, and I hadn't gotten around to it, and that was the chance to work with uh, small and medium-sized businesses and to help them leverage the type of sophisticated uh, business tools that uh, big corporations uh, typically have access to, whether it's uh, market development strategy, if it's uh, human resources strategy, uh, marketing uh, strategies, etc. And as it turned out, a number of my clients were academic clients, uh, a uh, college or two, uh, some charter schools, uh, so I was working with everything from high school students to, uh, to graduate programs. And I found that although I had corporate clients as well, that those academic clients were probably the most fun. I just enjoyed them. I enjoyed working with that mission of education, and it was wonderful to discover that you could support the mission of education, which I've always thought was very valuable, without necessarily being that resource standing in the front of the classroom. There's a lot of other pieces to keeping the wheels of a Institu an educational institution operating, whether it's a college, a high school, or a graduate program. And I was able to bring value to, the, to, the, to them as a consultant. And when one of those clients, having to be called St. Thomas, asked me to consider a, a, a permanent position with them, I, I was ready to take that move. And that's how I ended up here in Minneapolis. I am a high school student, high school senior. I am in college thinking that maybe I might want to go forth and get into higher education. What advice would you give somebody in that position who perhaps hasn't even started their career yet, based on what you know now, based on 
the years that you've been in your career, what is the single thing or the couple of things that you would say to them now? There's so many aspects to being in the academic world, uh, so many different options, and it's probably not going to be apparent to the typical high school senior what aspect they want to participate in. They, what's most visible to all of us is the teacher in the front of the classroom. Uh, that's something that you should prepare yourself for as an option, and uh, yeah, obviously attending to studies, moving on, being committed to not just a college degree, but also a graduate degree, uh, all is part of that. But I think the secret to success is finding something that you're passionate about. I think the, the ideal job is the job that you would pay to do, but you found a way that they will pay you to do it. And it takes some time sometimes to find what that thing is. And so I've really been blessed because I am uh, someone who's been a bit self-indulgent in my career. If I've found that I no longer enjoy what I'm doing, I will leave and do something else. Some people suffer all their, their lives in careers that they don't enjoy. I've been very blessed uh, in every job that I've been in to, uh, as I've, long as I've been in that job, I've been doing something that I've been passionate about and that I enjoy doing, whether it was uh, figuring out how to market consumer PCs or uh, figuring out how to develop new medical devices or open up new markets for medical devices in countries that didn't have a lot of advanced surgical uh, resources, or now being a part of a business school and helping young people prepare themselves for their future careers or helping us identify uh, the right candidates to be a part of this business program. I, it, it's all things that I love to do. I spend my weekends oftentimes doing some of the same things that I do during the week, talking to students, high school students, preparing them for case competitions, sharing with them my experience of uh, how to navigate uh, the work world, how to uh, work effectively in teams. It, it's something I enjoy doing. And so my advice to young people is to have broad experiences, have experiences in different spaces. Uh, you may think that I only love uh, English and history, but take a science course or two. Take, tell the uh, engineers, take a writing course or two. I tell everyone, study abroad. Experience people from cultures other than your own. Experience places that you've never seen. And uh, you don't know what is going to be the thing that you get excited about that's going to pique your interest and it will become the thing that you would do even if you had to pay to do it. But hopefully someone will pay you to do it. Bill, thank you so much for joining us on the Speedway Show today. Ms. Biwa, I really have enjoyed the time with you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for joining us on The Speedway Show. Visit thespeedwayshow.com for content and other episodes. Join the fan page at facebook.com slash thespeedwayshow. And follow Speedway on Twitter at the handle The Speedway Show. Until next week, live well, live fully, and love deeply.